For clients who have deficits in stability or even mobility in upper extremity, many times they can't disassociate the spine from the shoulder complex. They'll either have some lateral flexion of the spine or some sagittal plane flexion and extension of the spine to kind of make up for that deficit that they might have. Hey, look how much motion I have. That's not true. So we need to teach them to be stable through the midsection while we're learning to not only move at the glenohumeral joint, but to get upward and down rotation at the scapular thoracic joint. This next exercise is a, a variation of a quadruped position using a stability ball and just a five pound plate to teach your clients to disio disassociate the spine, the thorax, as well as the, from the glenohumeral joint and the scapular thoracic joint. Might want to have some sort of cushion mat underneath the knees if you're on a hardwood floor. You want a stability ball, 55 centimeters for most people I feel works. As a general rule of thumb, you want a ball that's going to be not quite as high as uh, the top of the rib cage when you're in a quadruped position. So 55 works for most folks. You could use smaller or larger. So we're going to put the stability ball behind us in this quadruped position and rock back into it. What the stability ball is going to do is actually going to give us resistance. So as we push away, as we scoop away, it's going to engage the core. For me, this is a very kind of natural motion as I scoop down and in. From a bodywork perspective, it's like I'm sinking down and in to the fascia, the paraspinals, and pushing away from the spine. So for me, this feels a lot like a massage therapy stroke. So you're not going to be in the traditional quadruped positions where the hands are underneath the shoulders. You're going to have the hands maybe a hand length from uh, underneath the shoulders or forward more and then you're going to rock back. And as you rock back, what's going to sink you back is not the lower extremity, but the upper extremity for beginning clients. Get some protraction, push down and away and hold here statically. Uh, for advanced clients, what you will see people is doing scaption from this position. But I found a nice in-between to teach someone how to get a little bit more out of this. On the side where the hand is down, you get a nice closed chain benefit from the protraction. Some internal oblique and core stability holding us in place as we go. Don't let the shoulder drop, stay strong. Keep the cervical spine neutral and stay long in the spine. And for that up arm, the one that's moving, we're teaching upward and downward rotation with shoulder flexion and extension. Hopefully you're getting some nice posterior glide or roll um, through that clavicle as well. And we're going to use the resistance just to help us engage the upward rotators and then to come back down. So engaging upward rotation, coming back down. You can just get some repeats for the rowing here, slow and steady. You can try to push out as far as possible. The challenge is if you push it out too far, it's going to be hard to get back. One thing that I like to do is hook a finger in, then move to the scaption, come back. Scaption, come back. Scaption, come back. So start off, rock back statically, get that kind of flexion and extension, upward and down rotation, add in that scaption with the elbow straight to get that lower trapezius firing as well, and see if you can get the benefit of the closed chain side of the body, as well as the open chain side of the body. We're also disassociating movement at the spine and the hips from the shoulder. So the spine and the hips stay still, the glenohumeral joint as well as the scapular thoracic joint are moving. Of course, the AC joint and the SC joint are going to be rolling along there too. But try this through your core stability as well as reconditioning exercise for the upper extremity and see if this variation is going to be helpful for you or your clients. My name is Eric Beard. Thanks for watching.